enjoy the decorations. I must not understand Christmas because I'm really not in the Christmas spirit. <coughs> I feel rather sad and depressed. I don't know about you today, but maybe you can identify with Charlie Brown as we enter into this busy, hectic, celebratory season known as Christmas. With all the gift giving and all the, the parties and all, it can sometimes, if we're honest, leave us drained. Sometimes there are uh, times when we hide the emptiness that we feel with our smiles. But the truth be known, there's some emptiness that can occur and can be actually elevated even during this time of year. Some of the reasons are this. Our, uh, our feelings can be conflicted and confused. Sometimes we're way, way, way up anticipating all those things that are going to be given to us, whether they're things that we saw on the internet or things that we're hoping are underneath the tree, the parties, the festivities, the, the traditions. Those sometimes elevate our mood, if you know what I mean. But then on the other side, it can turn on a dime and we can feel almost what? <coughs> Overwhelmed and just really like down and out and even sad. Some of the reasons are this. Our expectations at this time of year do not always match up to the reality of our lives. Here's an example. We have this anticipation, this expectation that we are going to give the most perfect gift to our kids, to our grandkids, whether they've shown it to us going down the Target aisle, whether they've shown it to us on the internet, whether they've shown us on a TV commercial, we think, wow, that's going to be a great gift. I can't wait to get that. Well, then you multiply that by other kids, other grandkids, your spouses, and then here's the reality that kind of hits you, the financial pressure. How of you understand what I mean? You have the expectation of going to all the parties, all the festivities, and you find yourself, what? Exhausted and drained. You spend all of that time with the decorations and the festiveness of it. And then there's the time pressure. There's just not enough time to do all that you want to do, all that you're invited to do, all that you need to do. There's just like this reality that sits in. And so oftentimes we can experience more than we want to really admit a charge of our Christmas. Or something is just missing, something is wrong. The question then comes, which is simple and yet difficult. What can be done this Christmas that can make a difference? What can be done on your part and on my part with simple faith that would cause us to experience joy? Because sometimes, I don't know if you know it, joy can sometimes seem very far away from us. <laughs> Today, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture for us that's very familiar to you. If you want to turn to it, you can. If you want to look it up on your phone, you can. It's Luke chapter 2, and I'm going to uh, read verses 1 through 16. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was taken. This, was, this first census was taken place by Cornelius was the governor of Cyrene. And everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Galilee, Nazareth, in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. But he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, 
In the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You shall find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly the great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the occasion of this season. Thank you that we can meet together. Thank you for what your word is going to share with us today in some fresh and new ways. So help us today, we pray, for your own name's sake. In Jesus' name. And everyone said together, Amen. Amen. Sometimes Pastor Joe has a hard time singing. Even the Bible with the lights. So hopefully I can uh, see a little bit better. This passage of scripture reveals to us that this joy that has come with the birth of the Messiah is for all people. Amen. As we know, God so loved the world. Does it say that God so loved Israel or that God so loved America? It was that God so loved the world. So this joy that is offered is offered to one and all. Let's look a little bit at a clearer definition, though, of what we mean by joy. Look what we have up on the screen. That is by Webster. We can have that, please. Here's what it says. That's, it's the next slide, please. What is joy? The emotion evoked by well-being, success, good fortune, or by the possession of Prospect of possessing what one desires. Two, a state of happiness. Or three, a source of delight. This is a great definition of joy. But when you think about it, Jesus Christ is the one that really fulfills every bit of those definitions. Every aspect, every angle you can find in Christ in this definition. Yeah. However, there are some times that we fall short of understanding that. The word joy is actually used in rather different ways throughout the Bible. I found this really quite unique. For example, in the Old Testament, may I give you three examples. In the Old Testament, we have, for example, whenever King Saul was anointed as the king of Israel, Israel rejoiced with exceeding great joy. The problem with that was it was circumstantial. It was around an event. It also occurred later on when David joins the scene, and David, along with King Saul, leads the children of Israel to a great victory. The women of the camp, they dance, they celebrate, they get out their tambourines, and all of that is fine and great. They have joy, but again, the joy is around a circumstance, an event that took place. When King Hezekiah, in the Old Testament, when he reestablished the Passover, the practice of the Passover, it brought great joy to the city of Jerusalem. But again, it was based on circumstances. It was based on an event that took place. You move into the New Testament. It's somewhat similar in many ways. The wise men, when they saw the star, they rejoiced. Well, again, it was circumstances. There was something that took place that happened that caused them to be joyful. When Jesus, when he sends out the 70 to minister in his name, they come back rejoicing. Why do they come back rejoicing? They come back rejoicing and say, Jesus, you're not going to believe this. But even the demons, they are subject to us by your name. So they're rejoicing. <coughs> but it was because of an event. Then lo and behold, Jesus in John chapter 15 makes this amazing statement that I want to read to you today. This amazing statement in John 15. I have told you these things, these things that he's been teaching. I have told you this so that my joy 
my joy may be in you and that your joy may be what? Complete. Amen. Complete. My joy. It's not going to be based on a circumstance. Although, how many of you know that when you serve Jesus, He brings a lot of great circumstances in your life that cause you to rejoice. Can we say amen? amen. There's a lot of victories and a lot of events that He causes to happen in your life because of His grace and mercy. But the source is not those events. The source is Christ Himself. Amen. The source of our joy at this Christmas season is not all this busyness. It is Christ and Christ alone. So this is a crucial, a crucial thing for us that our joy comes from abiding in Christ. This is my first point to you. Abiding in Christ. You see, His joy is given to us. His joy is everlasting. His joy is fulfilling to us. My friend, the crux of joy in your life is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the only source of true, lasting joy that you and I can have. Can we say amen? amen. amen. Joy. Joy comes to us because of Christ and what He has done for us. Abiding in Him. Having that kind of a relationship with Him. Having that kind of communion with Him. That, that kind of togetherness with Him. There's a story of a pastor and his wife that gets invited to go out to Seattle. They go out to Seattle to go to a pastor's conference. But what the pastor does is he decides to go about four or five days early and take his wife with him. They go out there. They have never been to Seattle. They've never been to the West Coast. They see the Space Needle. They actually have coffee in the first Starbucks. They actually go whale watching. They do all of these activities. But their joy did not come from those activities. Their joy came by being together. Away from ministry. Away from children. Away from grandchildren. Alone. The relationship was what brought them joy by being together. This is exactly the way that it is with you and I and Jesus Christ. We must have a relationship <coughs> abiding in Him and being connected to Him. Amen. Amen. Connected to Him. The next thing that we need to understand is that Jesus Christ wants us to be abiding in Him so that we have our joy and our nourishment and our support. Look, I did this today. Isn't this the most beautiful little rose that you've seen? This, this rose is giving off beauty today in this room. But did you know, you do know, this rose is dying. Its glory is fading. Why? It's been cut from its source. This is what happens to you and I as Christians, is that we can become so busy that we neglect our prayer life, we neglect Bible reading. We make some wrong choices. And the next thing you know, our relationship is being severed. Our communion, our communion, our, our, our fellowship with Christ is being severed. And well, we may be joyful for the occasion of the party. Kind of like this rose is right now for this occasion. But next Sunday, dead. Do you understand? Our joy comes from my I can give this to my wife. <laughs> Next, our joy comes from being at the feet of Jesus. You all know, like the back of your hand, the story of Mary and Martha. 
the sisters of Lazarus, the man that Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus goes there, and you know it quite well. Martha is the little Pastor Joe, the doer. Let's get this shit on the road. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? We've got things to do. We've got to put the supper on. We've got to get the table set. We've got to get all these things done. You know, and I have to really, I mean, that's something I want. I have to really guard about that. And there was some tension that took place between Mary and Martha. And guess what happened? Jesus gave Martha a gentle rebuke. Martha, can I just cut to the chase? What Mary has chosen is better. And, and it will not be taken from her. You see, that's what happens with us. We get so busy with the preparations, with the gifting, with the running here and there. I mean, you know, we put up our tree together. This is the first time in my life I've ever put up a Christmas tree in November. Isn't that strange? It just gets further and further and further, you know, far from Christmas. But we did that. Friday night, we put the tree up. Sixteen bulbs are out of the tree. We have those big old-fashioned, you know, ones that we had in the 1960s. You know what I'm talking about. All those basic colors. Sixteen of them. So that's a lot for our little pencil tree. So Pastor Joe has to go then yesterday in the midst of everything else to Lowe's. They were packed. People. You couldn't find an employee for love or money. <laughs> I looked here. I looked there. I could not find them. Last year they were out by the time I went to look for them. I did finally find an employer and I gave her a $20 tip. No, I didn't. <laughs> she didn't know really what I was talking about, but together she and I found what we were talking about. And they only had red and green. So I bought them. And then I swing over to Target to see if they got some. A zoo. <laughs> and then I get home. Do you, you understand what I mean? Just the, the mechanics of just getting this thing done. And if you're not quite careful, your time sitting at the feet of Jesus is wrong. And that time that you have, your mental resources, your spiritual resources, your physical resources, are not then being used to be at the feet of Jesus, like Mary. They're being used, like Martha, to do all this busy work. And somehow you think, wow, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really going on all fours, God. No, Jesus is saying, you need to spend time with me in order for your joy to be complete. In simple faith, in my relationship with you and your relationship with me. Abiding in Christ is where we get our joy, sitting at the feet of Jesus, and lastly, joy comes from our salvation. Amen. Joy comes from our salvation. But the problem is that sometimes you and I have a little bit of problem connecting with Jesus. We do. How many of you have ever found that sometimes your morning or evening prayer time or devotion time sometimes is a little bit hard to get through? Oh, Judy and I are the only ones that are in this boat. <laughs> that you go and, and you've got so many things going on. This is part of the reason why I need to do my devotion in the morning. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Because by the end of the day, my mind is so full of issues, problems, unpacking, that it's really hard for me to do it. So those kinds of things are issues that sometimes we face. But sometimes our, our time with God, our time with the Lord Jesus, is difficult for us to connect with Him. Sometimes it's because of the sin of busyness. 
sometimes, because of the business, as I mentioned, we, we neglect prayer and we neglect we neglect our time in the Word. Sometimes we even neglect being connected to this body of believers. How many of you know that part of your journey spiritually, part of your fellowship, part of your growth in Christ, part of the blessing in your life is from this congregation? How many of you understand that? Amen. That's the way God has set up the church and the fellowship of the church, but because of so many things that come to us, sometimes it's optional if we come. And the next thing you know, we've gotten a little further away from Christ, a little further away from Him, and here's what happens. We stay down. Let me illustrate the story. There was a man by the name of Archie Griffin who used to play football for the Ohio State. And you can tell that Pastor Joe has done some study for me to even know this. <laughs> and he was a freshman at Ohio State, and very rarely did freshmen get to play football. They normally sit on the bench. But lo and behold, one game the coach calls him out to play. The coach has set the game, has set the play, what is supposed to be executed. And lo, there you go. There's Archie Griffin, he gets the ball, and the play is to be played out, and it's a perfect, perfect setup. I mean, it's like Moses and the Red Sea parting before him. He's got a clear line to go through. But here's what happened. He looks this way to see this opposition. He looks that way to see this opposition before heading out. And because of all of that he's trying to do, he forgets. He loses his focus on securing the ball. And he fumbles the ball. He drops the ball and the other team gets it and takes possession of the ball. He could have died a thousand deaths. And here's what he did. Here's the coach right here on the sidelines. And whenever he goes off the field, he goes this way. He goes all the way down on the other end of the field on the same side, as far away from the coach as he could. The coach got him, spoke his mind to him, naturally. But my point is this, so often this is what we do with Christ. There's a setup that God has done for us in our lives, and sometimes we lose focus and we fumble. We fumble. Man, I don't know about you, but I have fumbled more times than I could ever count. And then what happens when we fumble, we feel so ashamed, so guilt-ridden, that instead of going directly to Jesus and really working it out and confessing our sins to Him and relying upon His grace, we go all the way down to the other end and we stay far away from Him as possible. We need to pray more of the prayer that David prayed. Create in me a clean and pure heart, O God. Do not take the, restore, restore the joy of your salvation to me. Our joy is found by abiding in Christ, sitting at his feet, and the joy of our salvation. In conclusion today, where would you be in that? Maybe you might need to pray the prayer that David prayed, maybe for the first time to be connected to Jesus for the first time. Maybe you need to pray to Jesus about not, not a connection for the first time, but maybe being reconnected to Him. You see, my friend, don't let joy elude you this Christmas season. Your joy is not going to be found at the end of the party. Your joy is not going to be found underneath the Christmas tree. Your joy is only found in Jesus. Amen. And you only receive and experience and keep connected with that joy. Not by busyness. Not by striving. But by simple faith. We pray. <coughs> Our Father, we... Thank you for the gift of joy. And sometimes we have experienced joy that really revolves around circumstances. Happenings. 
is where we get the word happiness from. I pray that, God, you would help us, that we would find our joy in you. I'm sure that many of us this time of year battle busyness, schedules that conflict and zap us dry. Sometimes, if we're really truthful, there's a little bit of a agitation in us because of all the demands. And sometimes, sorry to say, but by the time December 25th comes, we're almost glad to see it over. Change us this year that this Christmas season will not rob us of being connected with you, of abiding in you, that will rob us from sitting at your feet, that will get us dis focused and disconnected as we will sometimes fumble. Help us not to go at the very end of the spiritual plane for you. Away from you. Staying away from you in prayer. Staying away from you in worship. Staying in a distance. But help us to connect with you. I mean, wow. No better time of Christmas to be connected with you, Lord Jesus. So I pray that you'll help us as people today and as individuals. We will experience and know the joy of your salvation. In spite of the circumstances, in spite of the activities, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, Kevin's going to sing, and I think lead us in a song. If you'd like to talk to the Lord, maybe you'd like to be reconnected to Him, you want to just talk to Him by yourself, uh, maybe some things have happened, maybe you're overwhelmed already at Christmas time. Maybe you put up the Christmas tree and you have found that there's 16 light bulbs burned out and you've just been a little edgy. Maybe you've not had enough time to spend in prayer or spend in the Word. Maybe you've never really asked Christ in your life. Maybe you've never asked Him to be your Lord and Savior. We want to give you that opportunity. If you would like to pray and pray alone, we're invited to use these altars on this side. This is what we practice here. No one will come to you if you come and pray on this side. However, yeah, we also want to be available for those of you that might want someone to come and pray with you, to help you, to encourage you, to maybe even give you a word of counsel and, and blessing. If you want to have someone pray with you, you come to this side and that will cue us that you would like someone to pray. But even so, would you mind standing and let's respond as God is directing you during this time as we enter in to Christmas. Create me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create me a clean heart, O oh 